let's talk about things. Okay. Do you want to go first, since you are my guest? <laughs> oh, wait. First, before I before we oh, just geez. go into things, uh, yeah. who are you? Okay. So I am the. Thank you for having me, Cameron Calicott. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Of course. Uh, I am Cameron Calicott's older brother, Lloyd Calicott. And I have two YouTube channels, not even close to the popularity that Cameron does. <laughs> uh, my first one that I started is called Crazy Conjurations. Yep. And we'll leave links down in the description yes. for you guys. Of course. Of course. Of course. And that one has been going on for about a year and a half now. I've posted here and there, kind of hit or miss. That yeah, I think is... we started around like the same time. Yeah, because I think you had just started. I think yep. you had like just started, and I had like made my channel already, but I hadn't uploaded anything. And then we like started uploading around the same time. Right, exactly. So I started this channel, Crazy Conjurations, and that was going to be like the everything channel. Anything that was about gaming, or I do a lot of fabrication stuff and paintwork. So I ended up making two different channels. Um,. Crazy Conjurations is more about doing fabrication work and doing stuff along the lines of, uh, I do a lot of hydro dipping on that channel, whether it's Nerf guns or motorcycle parts, uh, so forth yeah, and so on. <laughs> um, and then my, so pretty much anything, whether it's a fix it kind of deal or mm -hmm. doing custom work, uh, just actually in the world, not in the digital world. And yeah. then my second channel is Tower Users. So that's kind of a throwback to the whole uh, Tron aspect and, you know, incorporating PC gaming into that. And I take a lot of elements of, um, I do comparisons between like uh, PC gaming and console gaming, as well as just funny videos. You know, there's mm -hmm. always the glitch videos, whether it be um, Battlefield or uh, Overwatch or anything like that. Uh, that kind of rolls me into the first thing that I do want to talk about. So you mm -hmm. can hit me up on Tower Users. Oh my that's, goodness! <laughs> that's why the YouTube channel Cameron is dying. Apparently, <laughs> he's going I, down I went to hard. I reached for my mouse and you know <laughs> forgot there's a water bottle in the way. Going down, uh, going down hard. But yeah, so sure. you have the channel for all the you know like fix it and like handy type stuff, and you have the one for gaming. So there's really like stuff for any any person that is interested in anything out there right exactly so i kind of do real world real world stuff with crazy conjurations so it mm -hmm. could be anything it could be like hey my lawnmower broke and this is a cool idea i came up with on my 3d printer to fix the plastic part that broke mm -hmm. um all the way up to i just did a recent video that i posted on crazy conjurations where i took apart my 2003 z1000 because I had some uh, fuel injection problems with that. And I had looked and looked and looked and looked for years on this same problem that tons and tons of people were having. And the only video that I could find that somebody actually made a video to fix the problem was in Russian. Oh, nice. So <laughs> you couldn't understand anything that was going on and you couldn't understand anything that was happening. So mm -hmm. I decided to do my own video. It's about a 10 minute oh, video that I, uh, it, yeah, it's about 10 minutes long. And I kind of, I it was probably like three hours worth of recording that I squished <laughs> down into ten a ten minute video just to speed yeah. things up, but it highlighted a lot of the issues that were on that motorcycle. So come check it out, Crazy mm -hmm. Conjurations, and my other channel, Tower Users, is all about doing stuff for uh, computer based video games and mm -hmm. anything that's on the computer. I do some three D printing stuff on that, so I'll probably be posting a lot of my new 3d printer um it's kind of a printer that people are bashing really bad right now <laughs> it's so i'm kind of sticking up for it a little bit i watched a couple of videos here and there on um things that were going on with that and uh -huh. it's from uh gear best it's called the tron x y x3 what a name so yeah exactly <laughs> so and a lot of people are calling it the tronic -E or the oh. tron the trunk ski just, that's yeah just pronouncing all of it <laughs> yeah pretty much all together in one big random thing um mm -hmm. it was about 10 hours it took me to unbox it build it and then i'm currently printing right now if you can hear it in the background so that was uh people were saying it took them anywhere from 8 to 12 hours um and then the instructions were total trash and you couldn't figure out what where things were going or how to put it together um, but it was pretty straightforward for me. I did have some issues with figuring out the wiring, but I looked at a couple little diagrams and I was good to go. So I think I'm going to do a more in-depth review on that, and I'll post that on Tower Users. 
and hopefully get some people to kind of like this printer. So far, I've printed mm -hmm. two things, and I got really solid, good quality prints out of it. And That's good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. A lot of people were bashing on it saying it took me forever to build it, and then the prints were terrible. Oh. So at least now the prints are really good, and I'm liking it. I tried printing ABS versus PLA plastic the other day, and I'm having problems with bed adhesion, which is just kind of the thing you have with ABS plastic. So I'll get it dialed in. Other than that, I'm using Cura as my slicer. I might try Simplify, Simplify 3D, which is another uh, 3D printer slicer. And we'll go from there. But yeah, look forward to that video in the future for sure. Cool stuff. I like the um, the PC cleaning video on Tower Users Channel. That's a good one. Yeah, that was that was your newest solid. one. Mm -hmm. That was uh, so I got a new camera and I was just kind of cleaning my desk up. So that was a quick throw together mm -hmm. video. Uh, the mm -hmm. camera that I recorded that with doesn't have good low light quality, so I apologize for oh, that. Yeah. But <laughs> it's the it's a motorcycle camera which camera can't see this, but I'm showing it to you right now. It, it's called <laughs> it's the... somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's called the Senna, the Senna or Sena tube, S-E-N-A, and tube, like, you know, like a tube cigar. I'm showing yeah. it to them here. But um, I'll post a link for that. I just got tired. I got tired of using GoPros and stuff, so I was looking for a cheaper alternative. Um, so it's really nice. It's very slim and round. As you can see, well, camera can't see, but they, everybody else can see. It's very slim and round, yep. and it goes into a little slide clip. It's very light. It's an aluminum case, the little aluminum case. Um, it is waterproof. It is shockproof. Oh, that's cool. And crush proof and all that good stuff. But it is literally at a quarter of the price of what a GoPro would be. So a GoPro, you'll pay 350 to $450 for a GoPro, Yeah, right? they're, like, ridiculously expensive. Yeah, they're getting way <laughs> over the top. So I was looking for a cheaper alternative. Just got tired of GoPro altogether. So I mm -hmm. went to this, tried it out. A buddy of mine in Sacramento has been using them. Mm -hmm. And he uses them for a lot of dirt bike riding. So I wanted to try oh. it for that. And, uh, oh, video to be posted on that soon. The wife got a new quad. And we did some oh. footage with this camera. So hopefully we'll post that here soon. And you guys Fun can check. stuff. Yeah, check that out. But I'll leave a link down in the description for the Cena tube. And they're only about 120 bucks, and it comes with a mount, and it comes with two different mounts, and then the camera itself. And all you have to do is put a micro SD card in the back, and charge it off a USB 3 like Android charger, huh. and you're good to go. Which it comes with all that convenient that it doesn't have its own. I hate it when you get some electronic and it has its like own special charger, and you have to like buy it from that company if you lose it or if it breaks or something, and it just ruins everything because you have to get the one certain kind and you can't use anything else that you already have at home. Exactly, absolutely. And that was kind of the annoying thing with, which GoPro doesn't have that, but I got tired of getting funneled into their cases and funneled into all their mounts. Yeah, because just... it's like all specially sized where you have to use their stuff pretty much. Right. Exactly. So I went to this. It seems to work pretty well. It's 1080p, 60 frames per second. Um, and it is basically just point and shoot. There's less. Uh, it doesn't take... It, it will take still pictures and it will record, but you can't change too many of the settings. So it's kind of simplistic, mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of it. The simplicity is what makes it so so amazing. You just slap it on, slide the little record uh, doggle, and you're going. That's it. Oh, you good. Have to, you don't have to push a button, bunch of buttons. It's really easy to work with gloves. And that was my biggest thing with GoPros is that they're hard to push buttons with oh, gloves. So yeah, this you just pull a little ring that's on the side of it, and you're good to go. I'm looking at the video now. Did you do any like After Effect to the video, uh, like any contrast or anything like that? Because so it I looks did, good. That, yeah. So that video is 100% just shot, and then. Obviously, I just did some editing, cut and splice here and there. Uh huh. But I didn't do anything to the um. I didn't do anything to the contrast or anything. Yeah. How how I shot it is how it is now. Oh so. wow, it looks good then. You can kind of tell that it is kind of uh not it's very good with the low. Light, yeah. But yeah, it doesn't like low light too much. Um, but it's also a hundred twenty dollar ten eighty p camera. So yeah. What do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you had a topic you wanted to talk about at the okay. very beginning. So, uh, yeah, so uh, obviously people can probably see what's going on on my screen right now. 
Mm -hmm. I can't sign into my other thing. Here we go. Okay. So basically, the biggest thing I wanted to talk about is, and it's on everybody's list, is uh -huh. Mass Effect Andromeda. Let's yep. let's let's hit up on this for a second. You know, you'd think that <laughs> it's been out for a while, and you'd think that with everyone like talking about it, it'd get like fixed somewhat, or people would at least not be talking about it still. But no, it just keeps going. Yeah, and it seems to just <laughs> be getting worse and worse. So. Yeah. There is one video, hold on, I have pulled up here. There's one video that is just, there's one scene where this guy is just going ham in his, what is the little car, what's the car made? So I haven't looked into Oh, I don't. Here we go. I don't know. So Mass Effect Andromeda, it's on Game Ranks. It's a Game Ranks mm -hmm. video. Shout out to Game Ranks. They have 3.3 million subscribers. That's that's a have testament, fun. right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. So... A lot of this got fixed in the patch, and I know people are going to go, oh my gosh, the patch fixed so much. It did. So a month after yeah, the game I've... came out, they put okay. out a big patch, and they fixed a lot of problems. But with that said, it took them a month to come out with a patch <laughs> for a game that they said was finished. Uh -huh. And they spent over $40 million on this game. So how in no. the world... I, I didn't follow the game as it was, like, coming out and everything like that. Because I'm not much of, like, Mass Effect fan. I have, like, played it here and there, but I don't, like, Neither care a ton. But didn't they push this game back because they said it wasn't ready yet? So they pushed it to get it all finalized? Don't quote me on this, but I think they pushed it back twice. I could be wrong, though. Yeah, because I thought I remembered hearing about that. And then <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it just... it There's got glitches it got... everywhere. Mad glitches. I think... Whoops, sorry. I think a lot of that was on the PC versus the console mm -hmm. because I've talked to people that are playing it on Xbox One and they love it. They're like, I haven't, I had some glitches when I first started playing, but now that the new patch came out, I don't have any problems. So I think it was basically PC users, which is really sad because generally PC has works more fluently than console does. Yeah. But I will say that that could be contributed to the fact that they dumb things down a lot for console versus PC, whereas PC, you have all kinds of settings and stuff where you can just render it. Hey, we're doing it on Xbox One. We're doing it at 60 frames per second, 1080p, or now, I guess, 4K. And this is how it's going to be. You can't change graphic settings. You can't change frame rates. You can't change any of this stuff. So PC had a lot of crazy glitches. Like, this guy's walking through the middle mm -hmm. of space like he's in a spaceship right now. My yeah. favorite... I'm watching this video. It's the Game Ranks one also. The just dumb yet hilarious glitches. Yeah, okay, so go to... I'm watching through it also, and it's just the, like, weirdest things. <laughs> like, so constantly. Skip it's to... like you're trying to jump over... You're, like, trying to hurdle yeah. over a table, and you get stuck in it. It's like, why? <laughs> so skip to minute uh, 350. Go to, th okay. go to three, uh, 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Let me know when you're there, and we're just going to kind of okay go this. i'm at 350 where he's doing donuts on the okay ice. <laughs> so whatever this car is called i'm gonna call it a scarab because i play elite danger so this the scarab uh this guy found this glitch where he went out onto the ice and he's doing crazy 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 donuts uh-huh and he's just spinning around and it just keeps going and going and going and going and going uh -huh. and building up faster and faster and i'm pretty sure this is oh. on the playstation <laughs> until he finally like... hits a rock he finally hits a rock and he just <laughs> It's just spinning so oh my goodness. So fast. It's just uncomprehendable altogether. I don't understand yeah. how he even gets Oh my gosh. It's Yeah, just, by the it's... by the controls on the screen it looks like PlayStation. Yeah, I mean he's got L one a D pad and then he yeah. hits a rock and he explodes into nothingness, so Yeah, it's um, Crazy. <laughs> It's it doesn't look uh no, I mean it, it looks it... fun, but it doesn't look like what's supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're into Mass Effect, then, hey, by all means, great new Mass Effect game that just came out, but five years plus $40 million in the making. Come on, people. Yeah. Pull it together. Why are we releasing games? And this is the biggest thing nowadays is you have all these AAA titles that are saying, oh, we got this new idea, we got this new idea, and then they release it, and it's not even finished. At best, it's still uh -huh. an alpha or at best, it's yeah, beta, if not alpha. That's one thing that I'm kind of hating about, like, all the gaming stuff of the past few years, is it's always early release crap going on. Like, the game comes out, like, 20 times before it's yeah. actually, like, released. 
it's it's kind of annoying i wish the game would just like be finished and then release like it yeah. used to instead of they have 14 betas at, that people play and then early release access and then the game comes out yeah, you're like i've been playing this game for a year and now all of a sudden you're releasing mm -hmm. it okay sounds sounds great yeah, yeah. and i think that uh arc survival game is one of those where it's like been out for probably a year or so and it's still not technically fully released uh yeah like I'll, I'll totally agree with that i tried to play arc survival when it was like pre-release and i paid into the pre-release uh huh. And I tried to play. Still to this day, cannot figure that game out. I have no idea what's going on. No <laughs> yeah. idea what's going on. I yeah. always just go in there and I'm like, oh sweet, I got a club, and uh, now I made a fire. And someone comes by and they have like full armor and they're riding a stegosaurus <laughs> and they just kill me and take all my stuff. And I'm just like, ah, okay, yeah. I'm done. I don't want to play this game anymore. I have no clue what's happening. I have a quick and easy, easy, not easy. I have a quick and easy question that's yeah. completely off topic. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What's your favorite cereal? Okay, so my favorite cereal... Gosh, that's kind of a tough one, actually. I thought it was going to be easy. I know. It's that's such a simple-sounding question, but when you think about it, but, it's like, you can't choose. Long story <laughs> short, I don't typically eat cereal. Okay. So, I did when I was a kid, but if I mm -hmm. have to eat cereal, I would have to choose between the, <laughs> the mouth-cutting captain's crunch <laughs> yes such mouth cutting <laughs> mouth cutting captain's crunch or cinnamon toast crunch oh those are good choices i was really worried that you're gonna say something stupid like raisin bran or something like that Wheat bins. I like <laughs> yeah I like that's frosted. the worst answer you could give <laughs> frosted flakes uh i really like lucky charms i used to hate it for some reason i just like okay. got a bag because i was thinking i was like you know i have cereal a lot i, I love eating cereal it's like the go-to snack and so, I I normally go with like the um, what the cocoa pebbles or the uh, golden puffs. Those are like my go-to ones. And then I was thinking about it, and I haven't had Lucky Charms in a while, so I was like, well, I'll go ahead and try that out. And uh -huh. I've recently like fallen in love with it, and I don't know why. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Lucky Charms. Okay, so with Lucky Charms being said. Uh, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, what happens when you grew up eating tricks oh and there God. were all kinds of different shapes yes, and colors I talk about and this stuff all the time, right? So right? let's remember they're like a clover and uh -huh. a moon and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and or whatever. Or, I'm sorry, I'm getting now. You have me confused with Lucky Charms, but yeah. So <laughs> the tricks were different shapes, like grapes and whatever else. Yep, then, they were all shaped to like their color and the fruit that it is. Exactly, exactly. And then you yeah. grow up and you hit about like the 16 year age, or I don't uh -huh. know. Maybe that's probably about when it was for me. And now they're yeah. just balls. They're just yeah. balls. You so, want to know why? Do kids see the original shapes? Yeah, you want to know why? Because <laughs> tricks are for kids. I know, right? That's <laughs> ridiculous. So when you Wait. when you aren't I... a kid, they aren't for you. <laughs> so they're just boring balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I stopped eating them. I used to like yeah, them when I was a exactly. kid. And then they just, all of a sudden it was like, these are just balls. Why yeah. don't I like these anymore? I don't, I don't want to eat this. What the yeah. hell? That's what yeah. I am always saying when I go in the store and I go to get my Lucky Charms and I see the tricks. I'm like, you know what? They aren't for kids. That's why they're stupid now. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, that's I'm so I... happy you talked about that because <laughs> th that that burns in my brain every day. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. Neither do I. You have something you want to talk about, or do you want me to go ahead with another so, one? So okay. So I want what I want to do now that I got this new 3D printer up and running and they can see it on my screen. This guy has made uh let's see what's his what's his name uh uncle jesse okay. is the youtuber and he made this amazing and i don't even know if he made the source i think somebody else made the source code for the mask but he made a legitimate deadpool mask with magnetic interchangeable eyes what? so right so it's a full <laughs> face it's a full face mask and he painted it but uh, I think I would rather cover it in like legitimate cloth. It's a it's oh yeah a, yeah it's a face shell that's like the outline of Deadpool right, and you mm -hmm. wear it, but then you can cover it in cloth. But the best part is is like you know how Deadpool's eyes are always changing, obviously yeah. like as he's talking and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's like six different variations of eye sets that you can com combine together, and this guy did a really good job 
first he built built the mask uh, from scratch. Obviously, he three D printed it like top and bottom, and painted it, and did all these kind of colors and everything like that. I have a Deathstroke mask that I made that's really close to it, or in, as far as quality goes, mm -hmm. and um, it looks awesome. So he made the eye pieces, the black, uh, whatever you want to say, the black eye marks that the Deadpool has. Holes. <laughs> yeah, the, his holes. So his... those are interchangeable and they're magnetic. So he just like pops them on, pops them off, that's so that cool. he can change his facial expressions all the time. So I think I really, I really want to try and make that. Um, I'm not sure what his build time is, but obviously I've always been a huge fan of Deadpool and uh, also Deathstroke. Before everyone else was. Right, way before everybody. <laughs> before the movie ever came out and uh -huh. he was still in comic books and stuff. He was basically the comic relief uh, and that was just, that was the best part about it. He was the yeah. comic relief for Marvel. He just jumped in, kicked a bunch of ass, and then made a bunch of jokes about it. So that Yeah, because I remember part. for me growing up, I just liked Spider-Man and Captain America because, you know, they look cool and they're always in the coloring books. And, you know, you would always, like, have Deadpool and uh, family friends, like, would talk about Deadpool and stuff like that. And, right. Uh, not really knowing it, you know, being a kid. And then the game came out for Xbox and played through that, which was hilarious and, like, ultimately one of the best games, in my opinion. Uh, and fell in love with Deadpool from that. And then the movie came out and now everyone loves him. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound kind of muffled, though. Well, yeah, because now I'm wearing my Deathstroke mask. I think I'm just going to oh. the rest of the show with my death <laughs> mask on. No big deal, you know. Uh -huh. Just wearing my Deathstroke mask. Yeah, just a normal day, right? Just a normal day, yep. It gets really hot in this thing, though. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Speaking of hot, I'm freezing right now because I turned off that heater and it wasn't really warm enough yet, so I'm going to go turn it on, so entertain people for a second. Okay, so here okay, I am fun. with my awesome Deathstroke mask. As you can see, it looks pretty good. I hope you guys like it. This has been... Okay, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take that off there. Okay. This has basically been my Halloween costume, along with a really bad Deadpool costume that I have for, like, the last, I don't know, two or three years. I've basically been Deathstroke for Halloween because it's the best costume I got. Uh, I painted this myself. I did not make it myself. This is a... Uh, plastic mold injected mask that I bought off of Etsy and it actually turned out really well so it came in black and then I painted it myself and I got to do a little bit more airbrush stuff put some more damage on it and rough it up a little bit yeah um, make it look worn it actually has held up really well I'm very impressed I think I paid like 80 bucks for it and mm. it's really solid it looks really good and I enjoy it thoroughly it scares the crap out of kids on Halloween <laughs> so typically I set up my fog machine out front and uh, I have this gigantic air horn that I'll put in oh. there and I go from that. And it's very gorgeous. That's awesome. And my Speaking lovely wife is here. Does everybody want to say hello oh. to my lovely wife, Caitlin? Okay. <laughs> How Caitlin, are you doing, babe? Caitlin, get on a mic. Say hi. Hey. hey. All right. So we're going to do a guest thing. Let me switch my microphone to interview real quick. Yeah. We're going yeah. to have her join in. Okay. Yes. Do you want to be on a podcast, babe? It's it's mine. Oh yeah, it's all the time. <laughs> it's Cameron's podcast. Hello. Okay, let's do this real quick. Let's. All right, Kate, say stuff. Kate, say stuff. Can she hear me? Yeah, you're good. Hello. Hi. Now you're now you're there. Say hi. Okay. Hi. So this is my. This is my wife, Caitlin, and she is the one that lets me build things and be annoying 72% <laughs> of the time. <laughs> Only 72? That's kind of low. Only 72% of the time. Wow, exactly. Caitlin, what are you doing? Perfect. <laughs> nope, Jack-Jack's in here too as well. I don't hear her anymore. Is she not talking? No, she's not talking. Of course. Everybody can see and hear you. Okay. Wait, no, wait. Good. Don't let her leave. I. She can be included in this question. Okay, so Kate has to be included in this question. Go ahead. Yep. I don't know if she'll even know how to answer it, though. She can hear me, right? Yeah, she can hear you pretty decent. Cool. I got you through your headsets. It's mainly for you, Lloyd, but Kate can't answer it also. Okay, go. W would you rather only play Dreamcast or only play N64 for the rest of your life? She has played neither, so she wouldn't. Yeah, I knew. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> she says N64. Cool answer, Kate. Solid. Double. Lloyd. Oh gosh, I don't know. 
I am biased to that question because I grew up with both of them, but yes. we had a Dreamcast in the household. So mm -hmm. honestly, I would say I'd have to I'd have to go with Dreamcast. With the only aspect of most of the time I would play video games by myself. Now if I was gonna go to play with yeah. friends. And gosh man, I'm cutting out Zelda. I can't Yep, you can't that's the big thing to me, oh, is that if you're playing it for the rest of your life. Zelda yeah, is the know. one I would want. 64. <laughs> GameCube. 64, obviously, because okay. GameCube is that's Nintendo what also. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I figured, so that's why I said N64. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. See, I, I want to do San Francisco Rush 2049 right now, uh -huh. but at the same time, you kind of can't beat Smash Bros. with friends. You can't mm -hmm. beat Smash Bros. Yeah, it's really hard because, like, with Dreamcast, you yeah. have... To me, yeah. it just feels like you have more choices for some reason. I know there's, for like, sure. tons of games on 64, but there's more that I, like, remember playing on Dreamcast. Like, you have Crazy Taxi, and you have... Yeah, Crazy uh, Taxi was a solid one there, too. Yeah, and you have, like, the Sega Bass Fishing and stuff like that, which is, like, yeah, I can't pass crazy Sega fun. Bass Fishing. I can't say I know. That. But uh, you also have, like, Sonic Adventure, which could replace Zelda, but it's just, like, the not-as-fun version, because Zelda will just last you forever. Yep. And and, uh, and the whole Gundam series. Remember the mm -hmm. whole yep. Mega Max Gundam series? That was yeah. really good. Mario. So, yeah, I kind of want to say Dreamcast also, but it's just hard to not pick Nintendo, because there's, yeah. like, tons of huge stuff with that, too. Because, like, you have Zelda, and you have, like, the million Mario Party games and, like, Mario Kart and stuff like that, yeah. which would last forever. Yeah, I think if you're if you're including playing with friends, uh, I'd say N64. If for sure. it's more on your own, Dreamcast. Absolutely, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, I randomly thought about that at work one night, and I was like, if I ever have Lloyd on the podcast, that's a perfect question. <laughs> okay, Kate is leaving. Say goodbye to Caitlin. Bye, Caitlin. Bye. Wow, she added so much. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no, it's pretty much as I expected. I didn't think she would really know how to answer that anyway. No, that was very solid. Uh, I'm glad you guys got to enjoy my wife, Caitlin. And uh, yeah, and the little munchkins, we have some friends staying with us right now. They're moving out of their ah. house, and it's pretty sweet. So yeah, they were, they were, you couldn't see them, obviously, Cameron, but mm -hmm. they were jumping around. So uh, Dreamcast, that's pretty solid. Man, I still, okay, so I still currently have. Uh, SNES, so Super Nintendo, for people oh. that don't know what SNES is. I still have my Super Nintendo, I have my Dreamcast, I have the original Wii, which I play a lot of GameCube games on. The only <laughs> that's, reason That's the I, only I, use I, for it is GameCube games. Exactly. I couldn't find a GameCube. I have GameCube controllers and I have uh -huh. obviously Wii controllers, but the only reason that I keep the Wii around is because it's basically both. Yep. Not only can I just go on to the Wii network, which I'm pretty sure has completely crashed at this yeah, point. Probably. I would hope but so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I, it's, you can still watch Netflix on it, so I yep. guess that's still a thing. Um, but I doesn't play a lot of Netflix, games on it. Doesn't their Netflix look terrible? Like, it, yeah, it's all it's not seven, updated? It's a, Yeah, it's old school. It's in 720p, and I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's only got like 10 megabytes per second or something. Now, this might sound dumb. Does we have HDMI? So, we does not have HDMI. Oh my but, goodness. But it sounded dumb because you would think it would. But <laughs> you can uh I have a little adapter. Maybe I'll do a video on that, how to set up your Wii with HDMI. But Oh yeah, that's good. I have a little adapter that um converts the weird HD whatever kind of port is on the Wii. Someone can oh, somebody, let me guess. They have some kind of a, stupid. I'll put a little thing. I'll put a little thing up in the corner of what it actually is. But they have a Nintendo video capture uh, yeah. video soft whatever. <laughs> it's some sort of input, right? And then you could buy uh -huh. this little powered cartridge that converts it to HDMI. So that's basically oh. what I run, so I can run HDMI because I like to play Wii on my big eight foot projector. So mm -hmm. that makes it fun. When you're playing Wii Ping Pong on an 8-foot screen, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> you, can't turn that, you can't turn that down. Absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely not. That's so fun. with that said, gosh, that you still got me reeling on the idea of... Only one man, of those. Only one of those consoles for the rest of your life. The man, thing that 64... also kind of breaks your heart is thinking that you can't play on PC or Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> well, because like, yeah. there's a ton of that... that you would really want also you have to like replace the games that you currently play with old versions 
Because, like, the well, thing to me that I think of is that when I'm just, like, relaxing and, like, listening to music or, like, listening to someone else's podcast and, like, playing games, I'm, like, th- playing Rocket League or, like, Madden or something like that. Yeah. And I won't, like, be able to play those things anymore if it was one of those. Yo. You could play, like, Toy Commander. Dude, Toy Commander. I'm going to pull that game back out. So, I had a copy of Toy Commander. It got wrecked. So, did, they, did they have Toy Commander on 64 also? They might have been on both, I think. Don't think... I only remember us playing it on Dreamcast, but they might have had a 64 ver- I'm going to look it up. I'm looking it up right now. For some reason, my mind I tells me that was, was a 60, thing. I don't think there was a 64 version. Oh, was there? Dude, my mind's telling posted, me it existed. Somebody posted this Toy Commander video five years ago, and it's got 23,000 views. Toy Commander playthrough part one. <laughs> <laughs> holy cow uh i'll be able to um, tell you in a second just from yeah this guy i, I this clicked the link quite a that while seemed ago. like it would tell me but it brought me to a sketchy website <laughs> yeah dude toy commander was one of my favorite games back in the day it was yes. here's some here's some gameplay i'll show you guys some gameplay so basically you play as little tiny toys if you don't know what toy commander is you play as little tiny toys and you are in a house or a backyard or a basement, kitchen, living room, whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's all kinds of different missions. Like some missions, this guy is flying a plane and he has to push some eggs into a into a boiling oh water my goodness, I thing that one. to make it. Right. It was really hard. <laughs> so he pushes an egg into a pot of boiling water. And that's all your missions. One of my favorite missions was, I think you were in a biplane or a fighter jet. And cockroaches were crawling out of a toilet. Oh, and your yeah. Mission- Kill all of all of the cockroaches yeah. before they like got into one. the living room or something like that. That was one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that game, and then Revolt. Revolt oh, was on Dreamcast. I, yeah, so this is oh, I Revolt. can't believe I forgot about Revolt. It's such a good. So game. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that up too. I did a video on Revolt, and I'm pretty sure that is on mm-hmm. my channel. Uh, uh, I think it's on Crazy Conjurations. I don't think I have moved it over. Yeah, I think that one was when it was on. That was before. Yeah, yeah. that was before I went over oh. to. Yeah, that was before I went over to the other one. So, in Crazy Conjurations, if you go to that channel, yep, you I can see, it. see. Flashback to Dreamcast. Yep, I did a flashback to Dreamcast. And unfortunately, I was only able to get the intro for Toy Commander because mm-hmm. my CD is corrupted. So, I got to find another copy of that. And hopefully, I can give you guys a better video of uh, Toy Commander. You want to know something I just thought of that you were saying that game was corrupted? Dreamcast seemed to have a lot of issues with the discs. Like, not from, like, the copying thing, which I know was a big thing. But um, it seems like they broke a lot. Like, the game just wouldn't work. Uh, That was because... Okay, I can't even see stuff now. Bad. Because I remember one of my my absolute favorite game from when I was a kid and like growing up with you and Sheldon and everything was the uh, Coaster Works. I love that one. And that was a song game. It seemed like that one always was like broke. And I remember like we had multiple of that disc to try to play it, Coaster Works all the time. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It hardly worked at all because. Uh-huh you weren't ever able to get past, like, the loading menu. Uh-huh. And if you could, you'd, like, get past, like, the baby stage where you're making, like, a roller coaster <laughs> for a toddler, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, so I did a... Yeah, that was that was always tough. I'll have to see if I can get that to work again. Yeah, so I did a Dreamcast flashback, flashback to Dreamcast. I'm pretty sure I did this, like, on a duty day. And unfortunately, I was only able to get the intro for, for Toy Commander, which was pretty solid, but go ahead and go and watch that. And uh, yeah, it's not too bad. I I miss it. My favorite, which I do in this video, was Power Stone. Oh and yeah. I don't have I don't have Power Stone two. I'm pretty sure this is. Oh no, maybe this is Power Stone. Uh, I think that's one that you played in the video. Yeah. No, it was just original Power Stone. Yeah. Power Stone two, I couldn't find. And then what were some other ones I did? I did I did a couple <gasps> other ones. You have to just. Oh my god, I'm this. I'm remembering so many fun games. Uh, the uh. Ready to Rumble, the boxing. Ready to Rumble boxing. So I, have, good. I have a lot of them. Unfortunately, the CDs just get corrupted, and then I wasn't able to play any of them. Mm-hmm. I tried to do Ready to Rumble boxing, and it just the, crashed. So the more I'm thinking Dream about Rumble. it, I think Dreamcast is like kind of Dreamcast far ahead on 64. 
It was. <laughs> okay, so my hardest thing with Dreamcast is although they I don't feel like they necessarily rushed their console because all of the games performed really well yeah. unless you got the world's tiniest, tiniest scratch on a CD and then it was mm-hmm. done. And that yep. was part of the problem is that they didn't the reason that they went out or from what i have heard the reason that they went out so fast was because when they made cd copies for the game they didn't encrypt them mm-hmm. so basically back when back in the day of blockbuster <clears throat> when blockbuster was a thing i love blockbuster blockbuster was great but when blockbuster was a thing or v- game gallery or vi- movie gallery or whatever yeah. is going on with any of those you could basically go there pay your five dollars rent yep. the game for the week and then put it in your CD drive when mm-hmm. CD burners were a big thing, and you could burn the disc, and now you had the copy of the game. No ifs, ands, or buts. You are just ready to go. Yep. Just have it so, forever from renting it. <laughs> yep, from renting it. And that was one of the biggest things, is that PlayStation put up a little bit of encryption for their stuff with PS1. I think they learned their lesson with Dreamcast, and they quickly corrected that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dreamcast went down the tubes fast because they weren't selling any games, and then yeah. they didn't have anybody that wanted to make new games for them, which obviously they had a lot of big titles. I mean, mm-hmm. Power Stone, Power Stone 2, Ready to Rumble 1 and 2, and Sonic. then Sega Bass Fishing and Sonic. And then they were leagues ahead of everybody. Xbox stole their uh, controller design from yep. Dreamcast. Yep. They took that design, which, okay, I can't even say that they stole it because Microsoft and Sega were in cahoots, and basically... Mm-hmm. Sega was running a version of Windows, a dumbed-down version of Windows for the Sega Dreamcast. That's and how. The, that's why it ran so well. Also, just throwing it out there, most Sega games that come out nowadays are always on Xbox. It's what it goes to yes. now. <laughs> yes, because those guys were in cahoots. Oh, another yep. game that I played in here, which was awesome, Air Force Delta. Oh, oh my goodness, that's yep. such a good one. <laughs> You gotta rewatch this video, dude. I'm oh. watching. I'm watching my own video all over again. Air Force Delta was so sweet. So fighter pilot game. Basically, you flew around, blew stuff up, and it was just great. Like it worked so well. It was so simplistic. All you did was go around, and it, they would be like, "Here's a target. Go blow it up." It gave you cool things. Like when you kill somebody, it would be like, "Bingo!" It was just <laughs> everything you expected from a fighter pilot game, and it was all on. Remember, guys, this was all on one joystick. Mm-hmm. You didn't have two joysticks. There wasn't yep. Xbox. It just was the one and the D-pad, the first, and then the buttons. Yes. <laughs> Xbox was the first. Well, maybe PlayStation was. No, PlayStation didn't get two joysticks till PS2, right? Xbox uh... was the first person to do two joysticks. We're going to have to look into that. What, look into that. I'm seeming stupid, but did the original Xbox have two joysticks on its controller? It did not until later. I didn't later. think it did. No, it didn't until later. Yeah, they made like a newer version that wasn't stupid and fat, and I think it had the two then. Yep. Huh. Exactly. Pretty much. So next next topic. What do you have on your next topic? Well, you want to know something funny? Uh, one of them I had was our history of gaming, but that kind of just covered it. <laughs> yeah, we pretty much we pretty much rolled into that as well. I also, one thing that I want to oh, go talk ahead. go. No, oh, well, we'll go ahead first. I I already came up with one. Oh, I was just going to add to the Dreamcast games that I remember. Rayman yep. was awesome. Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, oh, Marvel vs. Capcom. That's what got me into the, like oh. Street Fighter and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, biggest ones that I just thought of that I can't believe we didn't think about. Oh, there's actually three now. Hydro Thunder. Oh, yeah. I first played that in an arcade in a yep. pizza joint. Tony, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games. Those were so good. That was also on PlayStation also, but we did play it a lot on 64 and Dreamcast. That was yep. that was a multi-platform game. The so. soundtrack in that game, were, that, those were some good so songs. So good. Even better than that. And Okay, a lot. I'm going might... to get a lot of hate for this. I'm going to get a lot of hate. And you know what? Bring it. Because I will stick up right and left. Tony Hawk Pro Skater, the whole series, was actually pretty decent. I I'm thinking was you're going to say what I think you're going to say, but I want to okay. hear it. Just lead up to it. I liked tony hawk pro Skater 2 the best the first mm-hmm. one awesome blew people's minds you yep. could do so many tricks you could play multiplayer it was awesome two was by far the best three got a little wonky and then i kind of lost interest in the series i agree that. with but, all that but the best and this was on dreamcast and it was a dreamcast exclusive I from it. what from what i understand is a dreamcast exclusive maybe yep. pc at the time but 
Dave Mira's yes. BMX bike racing yes. was the best game so ever good. on Dreamcast. And I, gosh, where is it? I it's know so it's, good. I know it's, I know Love it's in my video. Loving, it's what I got. I said, the best remember soundtrack. that. Gosh, yeah. That song, so, 400 you talked times. About, <laughs> <laughs> you talk about a soundtrack to a video game. Oh my gosh, in the 90s, that was the best soundtrack. Yes. Ever. Ever. And now I can't find it. Where is... I know I did it in my flashback. I know I put that in and I played that game. I know I did. I'm trying to find it. I always, my... whenever I think about the game, for some reason, I always think of the cover where it's just like red and it has like the silhouette of the bike guy on it. For some reason, that's like I really one go... of the coolest covers to me for some reason. Gosh, I really want to go grab the cover right now, but I, I, I'll, I'll post a new video. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a Dave Miro BMX bike run through because that game you was just. To. That game was phenomenal. And maybe I'll just, you know what? We're going to do, let's set a date. Let's set a date. I'm going to put this in my calendar. I'll put it in my phone right now. Let's set a date where we do a podcast or something of, the, of that where I just do a live broadcast of Dave Mira on Dreamcast. Okay. Let's do a run through. Yeah. Let's just do a run through. We'll set, it, we'll set a date. I remember I them know. having the What I Got by Sublime, but what other yep. s- song? What? I can't like instantly remember some else that were on there. Every good song ever. Can you? It was all some? ninety. It was no. I, <laughs> now that I can. I know that's the issue with me too. Is like I remember them all being great. Oh wow! I'm looking at it. the The bands is more what I recognize, and the songs I don't know as much by them. You got what I got by Sublime. You have Never Alone by Dropkick Murphys. There you go. Uh, Dust by Cypress Hill. Yep, here you go. So, oh, it was on PlayStation. It wasn't an exclusive. It was, oh, really? It was cross-platform. Cross yeah, cross-platform. Well, that sucks. Which I think all was, of those were back then. I so, like, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Dave Mira, Freestyle BMX. Where are these games? Why is this <laughs> game... I'm going to... This is a segue. Segue into something totally different. Segue. Why? <laughs> <laughs> We get, we keep getting all of these remastered games, right? Yep. All of them like, oh yeah, this game. So freaking and okay, this is I'm gonna start on this as well. One of the games that everybody hates on, but I have had hours of enjoyment playing is Bullet Storm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Bullet Storm, great game. That's a good okay? one. It is extremely extremely linear. It there's not a lot going on in it. You're you're basically a space pirate, and you're half cyborg, half human black friend who uh, ends up going crazy not too many spoiler alerts if you haven't played it yet but you should play it you should play it it is a hack and slash linear first person shooter and you have things like uh grappling hooks and crazy different types of guns Mm -hmm. and you sling these like orc looking people that are also shooting at you into like cactuses and spikes and it's a ridiculous game that's hilarious and awesome like all at once all together Mm-hmm. Okay, so they just came out with a remastered version of that. Yep. And they want you to pay top dollar for it. I think it's last I saw it was like fifty bucks. Is 50 it cents. actually? Yeah, it's what? it's full price. It's a triple A full price game. It doesn't. I actually it, didn't think it I was. Don't so I'll have to look at it again. I'll see if I can find it. Um, but okay, so we have games like Bullet Storm, which have overall basically gotten like two and a half to three and a half star reviews. Yeah. Overall. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. yeah, it was fun, but it's very linear. You can't go out and explore. And with everybody mm-hmm. wanting, like, open-world games and sandbox games and all that kind of nonsense, yeah. linear games are a thing of the past, unfortunately. I like them for just a uh, mindless, I don't want to think, I don't want to farm things, I just want to sit down and smash stuff mm-hmm. and kind of be entertained. Where, With that said, where are all of our remakes of, like, the original Tony Hawk Pro Skater yeah. and Dave Mira and all that stuff? So... And they well, they released the Tony Hawk Pro Skater like five, and that yeah. game is complete garbage. Like it's it terrible. is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> right. So they tried. So the company that did who's the company that did Skate? The company that EA. did Skate. It's EA. Okay. All right. So EA did Skate, and the first Skate was pretty I good. I love Skate so much. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's solid. They took a new, fresh look at the skateboarding genre of yeah. video games, and, and actually like, hey, made it realistic for once. Right, Tony Hawk realistic. really did gonna... not do. <laughs> no, it was like mash, smash a bunch of buttons, uh-huh. and you're doing 360 twist flips all over the place. Mm-hmm. 
not to bash Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but that's basically what it was. Yeah, that was the fun of it, is being ridiculous. It's the yeah. it's the arcade version of skateboarding. Then you have Skate, which is the simulator version of skateboarding, which is also extremely like fun. Right. right, exactly. So I want to bring back games like Dave Mira and Tony Hawk Pro Skater and... Uh, oh, what's another good one? Oh, freaking... Why don't we get a redo, uh, an upgrade... To Need for Speed Underground 2. Oh my goodness, you broke Where my heart. is where <laughs> in the world is my I'm bashing the desk right Where now. is Need for Speed yeah. itself? I mean they made the movie and then it's done. <laughs> Need for Speed Underground 1, solid game. Need yep. for Speed Underground 2. Another was... game with an amazing what? soundtrack. Riders on the storm playing That's... over and over again. <laughs> That's pretty much that's pretty much what's playing right now. I got a little thing in the background. Uh. Oh. Yeah, soundtrack is up right now. The soundtrack is an hour and thirty six minutes long. <laughs> yeah, Crazy. no wonder songs replay over and over again while you're going through the game. Well, when you put maybe I think I have like four thousand hours into that game. I'm picking that game up. We're gonna <laughs> write this down. Write this down. Because <laughs> guess what? I'm gonna do a whole replay through of all of these games, and it's probably gonna be the best thousand hours of my life. This is, going in, this is going in the books. <laughs> so, Need for, I'm pretty sure I have this. If not, I'm just going to get it on PC, and I know the PC is not the same as like playing it on Xbox or Dreamcast. That game I was so it. good. Yeah, we played it on Xbox, right? Original Xbox. Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Xbox, yeah. All same the more with, reason uh, for me to go back out and buy an original Xbox. How much are they going for on eBay? <laughs> probably, like, I, random guess, not knowing anything, I would say like 70, 80. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. So, <laughs> eBay, the dreaded site. It's like eBay is so trusted now, and I so, feel like people still no. haven't caught on to that. A hundred and ten dollars for an original Xbox loaded with retro games. Oh, because oh, this wow. guy is. So, where did my original Xbox go with the like green flames and stuff on it? Where is that? Who? I think freaking Sheldon has it. Probably. No, Sheldon. Oh, I think Sheldon yeah, has he it. He does. Yep. He does. I remember being there, and that's the one he has. Sheldon has it. Yep, because I have the green. Yeah. So I was trying to get that back from him, and he wouldn't give it to me because I want to hack it. You know what I mean? I want to. Uh -huh. I want to break. I want to break it, and I want to load a bunch of stuff on it. That is the only console ever in the history of all gaming consoles where you could literally never run out of space. It was impossible. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> it was only like what fifty thousand megabytes or something, but it's yeah. Like but it each game never... is like. 0.001% of that. <laughs> uh. Um, Something you were talking about earlier with Bulletstorm, it enraged me because I remember two games that we used to play together and were not supported at all. And uh, actually, one of them we might have not played together on it. But, um, crap, what is it? Uh, Syndicate. Love. Yes. Yes, I can Love think that about game. Making... The idea of that game, game and that how time. it was made oh. and everything was so oh good. My God. And they did, did not lose... they did not support like the online at all. We always got disconnected. We could play like one mission and then disconnected all the time. And the game was pretty buggy too. But why did it I don't understand. That game was leaps and bounds ahead of its time. It was so it's... good. And it ran really well. Like, if you played yeah. multiplayer, it ran yeah. phenomenally. Anytime we actually were Phenomenal. able to play with each other, it was, like, a ton of fun and worked great. <laughs> I'm going to find this game. You need to go... Okay, so I need you to go in North Bend or Coos Bay, and I need you to find me an original Xbox that works. And I'm going to buy it, and I want you to mail it to me. <laughs> okay. Because I don't want to pay this guy $109. Well, he does say... This is pretty solid. It says $109 in... Please pick ten games from below oh. and include a note with the purchase. Do they? And he's got a lot have of stuff. good games. There's a shit ton. 007, Agent Under Fire. I'm Ooh. not gonna read them all, but speaking 007's, of 007, Golden Eye. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> We're not there yet. American. Why does he have American Chopper? I thought you were about okay. to say American Ninja Warrior. I was about to say that didn't even exist no. back then. <laughs> big Game Hunter. Oh, he's got three different Call of Duties. Finest Hour, Big Red One, yep. Call of Duty Three. Yep. Uh, Crimson Skies, Da Vinci Code, Dead or Alive, Deus Ex, Entered the Matrix, dude, the Matrix. Oh, that was Entered a good the one. Matrix. Yeah, that was that was when Matrix was a big thing. That was and a good one. 
you actually were playing that game, it was enjoyable. I, mm-hmm. I had a blast with it. I probably have a couple hours into that. That's for yeah. sure. That's uh, one of those games people. where I was like still kind of a kid, and you and Sheldon would just play it, and I'd just stare and watch forever because it was so cool to watch. <laughs> it was it was definitely a game that I think was more fun to watch than it was to play because yeah, it was when know. they first well they first got into the genre where you would push a button and six things would happen and yeah. then you'd have to push the next button. So Medal yeah. of Honor, Rising Sun, games Medal of Honor, where someone yeah. can watch you play and be entertained are the best. So with that said, rolling into the next segue <laughs> is Dead Space. Oh yeah. Dead Space. Dead Space was a game that you could have just as much fun watching as you could playing the game. Mm-hmm. So yep. when I was in when I was in training, I would we get done with the day and oh, oh, hold I on. would go play Dead Space. You said when you were in training, what 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 for? What do you do? So I am currently enlisted in the United States Coast Guard, and I am a damage control man. I've been in eight years now, and look to do my 20 years of serving my country. Good call. Okay, so you're in training. <laughs> Sorry. While I was in training <laughs> for my job, I would play Dead Space on, like, we had a big common room where everybody would go at the end of the day and, like, watch movies and stuff. Uh-huh. And every once in a while, if nobody was watching a movie, I would drag my Xbox out there. I think I was playing it on 360. Yep. Mm-hmm. I would yep. drag my 360 out there, and I would throw on Dead Space, turn off all the lights in the common room, <laughs> make it super creepy and scary, and crank up the stereo, the crap stereo that they had there, mm-hmm. and play through Dead Space. I had solid 10 to 20 people that would go, hey, when is the next time you're going to play Dead Space? Because we want to watch. And That's so good. Right. And instead of watching a movie or something like that, we would, they would come and watch me play Dead Space. And mm-hmm. I just realized that I still have the Need for Speed 2 underground soundtrack playing in the background, which is hilarious. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it going. It's, yeah. It's, Might as well. <laughs> it's um, hilarious. Two things I thought about when you were telling that story is... Uh, Dead I already space. forgot one, so I'll just skip to the next one. Um, Dead space. Speaking of Dead Space, you uh, Dead space. one time I came down to Florida to visit for the summer, you got me to try out Dead Space, and that's really all I can remember from that summer, is just playing through Dead Space 1 and 2 forever, and, just playing and, through that, because it was so yep. good. Yeah, because I had just gotten 2, and I was like, you can't play 2 until you play 1. Uh huh. So you played through 1, and about pooped your pants for the first hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you finally figured it out, and from then on, it wasn't so bad. This yeah. guy ran through all of Death Space, not bad. The Rad Brad. Holy cow, dude. The Rad Brad. Hey, I, I've heard of that. Is he popular? I've heard that name. Uh, He has 7.1 million subscribers. Yeah, I think I've heard of him somewhere. <laughs> the Rad Brad has more, way more subscribers than even freaking Game Ranks does. Uh-huh. I've never even heard of this guy. I'm Well... Here you go. I'll give you one more subscription, bro. <laughs> when you, you were saying subs- Rad Brad has even more subscribers, I thought you were going to say than you, and I was like, well, thanks. <laughs> well, yeah, he definitely does have more subscribers than you Just do. Just a couple. Jeez, come on. <laughs> Crazy. Um, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, another game that you could just watch someone play forever. So, Legends of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, I'm pretty sure that there is a, well, obviously not, a, there's emulated versions for your phone, yep. but I'm pretty sure there's an actual phone version now, isn't there? Oh, really? I don't know. I don't know. We need to look that up. I know that that's there's like millions of emulators, emulators on everything where you can just play that. I have it you on my PC emulate. and that's how I'm playing through it. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But, at the same time, I would think that a lot of people enjoy playing through it just on n64 if you yeah. still have access just to an n64 the, the real way right exactly so i also remember first... some bits of majora's mask but i i didn't really get to play it as much yeah i don't i didn't play through a lot of that it was way creepy majora's mask yeah i didn't get to play through that there was some messed up stuff in that one it was it was kind of haunting in many ways. What do you think? This is way off gaming. What do you think about people calling themselves metalheads, like saying I'm a metalhead? What do you think about that? Uh, unless you actually enjoy listening to metal, don't call yourself a metalhead. Okay, that's kind of like 
around what I think too. I kind of think because lots of people say like if you call yourself a metalhead, you definitely aren't or something like that. And it's like to an extent you can like say that you are and you still can be. But I think if you just go around throwing it out there like at people that aren't like caring, it's kind of stupid yes. and you're kind of like a poser. But if like someone's asking you about your music and you say like I'm a metalhead, then I think nobody. That, I think that's fine. that's yeah. That's the hard part is nobody really says I'm a metalhead. Yeah. And if you do, you aren't a metalhead. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's the people that just throw it around are the ones that don't actually uh, like listen to it. Uh, speaking right. of like listening to actual metal, I want to figure out what bands are and what bands aren't metal according to you, because like everyone has way different aspects of it. Okay. Uh... Metallica, is it metal or not? This is a fun game for the podcast. Is it metal or not? Metal. <laughs> is it metal or not? Yeah, here we go. Is Metallica metal? So I would say that... So your honest answer, not according to what people say. <laughs> see, see, this is the hard part because uh -huh. metal as a whole has changed so much yes. over the last, say, five years that I would say Metallica is no longer metal. Yep. And they are rock. Yep, that's what I think too. They, I think back then, when they were in their heyday and everything, I think that would be metal. metal. But nowadays, they, and like what they're releasing now, also, it's just a rock band. They're just a rock. Band. They're still great. Like, I'm not saying they suck. They're still a great band, and they're very iconic. But they're not metal. Yep. Now, Event Sevenfold, metal or not? Not. Really? Rock band. I'd go as far as saying every album except the last two from them are metal. I don't think like the last the last two are like just rock, hard rock. I'd say. Uh, yeah, hard rock, not actually metal. Do you have a now, band to ask me? Probably won't know who they are. I can I can I, look them up and listen. Devil Wears Prada. Oh, I already know that. That's actually a hard one, um, because I want to throw that in a subgenre. You know, I want to say it's like, yep, metalcore, like emo metal, deathcore, <clears throat> something like that. Um, I'm still gonna listen to a song so that I can give yeah. an accurate get a, answer, get, a, get an idea, yeah, of where you because like I know spit. them but I don't listen to them. Uh, and then I'm gonna give you another band. So you might not say Devil Wears Prada. Devil Wears Prada is not. See, the do you word... like Devil Wears Prada? I do like them. Okay. But the problem with the word metal is that it doesn't mean one thing anymore. You have dark metal, death metal, uh, underground metal. Yeah. You have opera metal and yeah, there's progressive metal sub and all this kind forever. of stuff. Forever, you right. could find any yes. specific thing that you like. <laughs> Put an adjective in front of metal and yep. it's a thing. Yep. You could that's a silly metal. I bet you could find it. <laughs> then, and that's the hard part. It's like, okay, so are we gonna base metal off of Death Clock? Exactly. Like and, and and that's our basis? Like where do we stand here? Um do you mean in the most simple metal or like the middle ground? That's what I'm talking about. Like, is there a middle ground to the metal genre or are we just going with what metal was in the 90s? Because metal in the 90s was like Lamb of God, mm -hmm. Mushroom Head. Uh, oh my goodness, Mushroom Head. All that, all that kind of nonsense. <laughs> so, um, if, if I had to could... like give a band that I would say is like the middle ground of like metal, like the most generic like metal band you can like throw out there. Um, I don't know. It's really hard to like think of a good one, but I kind of. I'm thinking of bands that are like. I see. I want to say, certain songs by bands. It's hard to like just name a band, because like if you say, but be it's before changed. I forget yeah. from Slipknot. Like that song, I would say is a standard ground for metal, but I wouldn't say Slipknot is because it's it's is... a little too much for it to be a middle ground. They are kind of falling into the genre of. I don't want to say hate metal, but like angry metal. Yeah. yeah. 
Some, sometimes. And then they have, they switch it like up. Like a thrash metal type thing. So of. what would you say that Atreyu has turned into? Because Atreyu really back like in the early 2000s was considered like, uh, I don't even want to say opera metal, but yeah. they were like vocalistic metal. Yeah. And now they're more along the lines of mainstream. Not I would say Atreyu roll, is metalcore. Yeah. Okay. Along yeah, with I'll, bands I'll of that. like A Day to Remember and Bullet for My Valentine, which Bullet for My Valentine's my favorite band of all time. Um, but yeah, I'd throw a tray you in there. You're dating yourself so much with Bullet for My Valentine because you were growing up right in the age where I was old enough to realize that Bullet for My Valentine was full of a bunch of fags. They are then... so good. I <laughs> love them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so terrible. Have that's you so listened to the new terrible. song Don't Need You by them? Probably not. And you need to. Will. It's one of the best songs in the world. Uh, you should also listen to No Way Out. So good. Pretty sure I've heard that. Yeah. No listen Way to Out. one of them right now. I'm listening to no oh, stupid freaking. I'm listening to Bullet for My Valentine. Don't need you. Yes, it's so what good. What kills me is that Bullet for My Valentine only has 800,000 subscribers. <laughs> I know. <there's... laughs> Nobody cares. Nobody cares. They really aren't all that popular. There's a reason for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there is a reason for that. Kill Switch Engage, I guarantee Ooh, you, has more. I love. Yeah, more. They're kind of falling more. off with, like, they don't have Howard anymore. They, the, the black guy, Howard, they don't have him anymore. They have the white guy back. But it's still really good. They sound way different. All right, I'm listening to this. Stand by. Okay. So. F Are you listening to Don't Need You? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Tell me when, like, the actual song starts. <laughs> oh, it is. I'm a minute and a half into it. Okay. Because, like, it has a long intro. That, honestly, is probably one of my favorite songs of all time right now. I. It's definitely gotten back to its, like, their, like, 90s, yeah, late 90s Yeah, roots, their earlier albums are a lot more heavy, and this song kind of goes back to that. Well, yeah, they got away from the... Oh, ah! Which I'm yeah, because totally cause like in, there's some of the middle good. albums where it's like tears don't fall and it's like kind of more emo metal than it is metalcore. Yeah, and I was like, come on, man. I know you guys are better musicians than this. Get back mm -hmm. to where your roots are. Yeah, because I think the bands Kill Switch Engage, All That Remains, and Bullet For My Valentine are probably in my top favorite bands ever. And they kind of now all sound similar, which is great. Yeah, music has definitely taken a turn here, but I would still say that, see, now that this is coming around again, I would almost say that Both of My Valentine is stepping up for to wear, like, the level of Devil Wears Prada, because Devil yeah. Wears Prada even gets kind of screamo and emo here mm -hmm. and there on certain songs, but at the same time, they have different songs that come along, and they go back to their roots. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I think this next upcoming album for Bullet that will have the Don't Need You on it that you were just listening to, I think that'll probably be one of their best ones because that to me that song sounds great. Okay, I have a band for you. Okay. Trivium. Oh, metal oh my not. goodness, you broke... I love Trivium so much. <laughs> you know where they're they, from? Uh, the world. No, like city. Uh, I don't know. They're from Orlando. Well, that's pretty sweet to not know that. Yeah, I you love... know how they formed, like how they got together? Nope, I'm watching Until the World Goes Cold. Yep, that's a really good one. Strife is another really good one. Um, Trivium got together for a high school talent show. They were just like all friends that enjoyed metal, and they got they huh. formed their own little band to do a talent show. And then from then, they made an actual band. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think that this is one of the very rare bands that... Even though their guitarist and their musical tone is very, like, dark and cynical and dark and cynical, yeah, their vocals have a really nice way of overlaying on top of that some very high, methodical yeah, yeah. Uh, tones, where it blends really well it's together. A good not mix. a lot of bands can do that. Yeah, not a, a lot, lot of bands, bands are on one, like, flat line of dark or middle or higher sounding. Right, like... They're, if you if you take out all their vocals and you listen to the metal, you're like, oh yeah, all I'm gonna hear is. Yeah, you would think yeah. it's like uh, going with a really low vocals as well, like a Lamb of God sounding vocals would go with that music. You would think. Right, 
But at the same time, this is a good tribute to metal bands that say, hey, we don't have to have a screamer or a growler mm-hmm. or anything like that to be a really solid, I'm going to say, metal band. Yeah. Like, gr- not grunge, mm-hmm. just good metal band. Yep. I think now that you've mentioned that band, I would say that Trivium is, as we were talking about earlier, a like middle ground for metal. Trivium's probably one of those. Yeah, if you go, hey, what's metal? I would say Trivium. Yeah, that, that's a very good answer for that. I feel like they're they're pretty solid. There's a couple other bands that will fall into that. Um, why can I not remember the name of them? If I pull up my Spotify, I guarantee you I will be able to. I don't really want to talk about it too much, but have you have you what do you what do you think about Lincoln Park right now? Lincoln Park has shit their pants and will no longer be a good band That's ever again. So disappointing. Their their last good album so was bad. Meteora. Yeah. Or Hybrid Theory. I yeah. Say, it's, Hybrid Theory, it's Hybrid Theory is first, and then Meteora came yep. after, and then it's yep. trash. And it, it <laughs> pretty much as as soon as they, I, even before or so, as soon as they got into the realm of Transformers, they shit the bed. Yep. It. I think like the i don't know yeah. i don't remember what the name of the album that came third was but it was getting worse and but it was still listenable if that's a word yeah, um listenable yeah. yeah but you could tell that it's very music made for movies it sounds like like each song it, sounded like it was going to be in a soundtrack yeah, i don't yeah. yeah that i hate what i've done by it, lincoln it, park it, i hate that song just because of the whole transformers that i thing. hate that they have put together <laughs> Well, yeah, I just mean that one standing out in general because that's a really popular one, and just I, I it's so, so bad. bad. And they're super poppy now. It's so annoying. I don't. Nope. Don't like them. No. Don't like them. At Let me all. look if I have any more certain things to talk about. So, so. Oh, uh, go ahead. One other thing that I do want to talk about, and then I'm going to have to go. Yep. Is... This, th- by the way, this is super long for my podcast. <laughs> yeah, I think we got a, like a solid hour going on Yeah, here. We're, we're pretty much at an hour, and I think the longest one I've had is like 34 minutes. <laughs> so if you haven't seen this, which most people have, or at least have heard of them, is these guys from Bad Lip Reading need to Ooh. come out with a new Star Wars bad lip reading they've done a good amount of star wars ones they have so the, the, uh, the nfl Strikes ones back, are my favorites the, yeah it's good so i don't know what it is but i die laughing every time i watch the bad the empire strikes back seagulls stop it now oh yeah i've seen that yeah <laughs> that's a good one i can't i i can't take it it's yeah. on right now and this is probably one of their best ones where it's... it flows with what they edited into mm-hmm. it and it just makes sense. Yeah. Even like Yoda talking is just spot on. 100% if you spot show... on. I bet if you showed someone that that's never seen anything of Star Wars, they would believe that's actually what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have to show them the version. They did a version without the like pop-up subtitles and now it has like pop-up subtitles. Oh. You got to show them the version before they put up the, the like yeah, just the uh, video subtitles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be hilarious to see what the reaction is to thinking that's what Star Wars is. <laughs> yeah, I people would be like, why do any? Why does anybody like this at all? I do like the Force Awakens one. That one's solid, but it's just uh-huh. very like we're gonna make fun of everything. Whereas this is, it's you could almost, you could, almost buy it. Like, yeah, you could. It's legitimate. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, do. You, this is back to gaming uh yeah. think of some random game you really like it doesn't have to be like a favorite because that's really hard to think of a favorite video game just some random game that you love gosh recently or in the past or uh what? more recently but it can be a past one i'd say within the last 10 years I a game that you really love okay so two games that i'm gonna bring up that no one is gonna know what i'm talking about and i will try my hardest to find footage of it so we can put it in here okay this is back this is back when i was like eight that is not within the last 10 years but all right i accept no it. it's no it's not <laughs> we're gonna i'm gonna admit these i'm gonna admit these two and then we're gonna go from there so okay. this is back when it'll still computer, work it'll still work for play. my question yeah and then i'll give you a new one too but okay Back on computers, when you wanted to play a video game, you had to load in DOS. Uh huh. The two games that I like playing the most were uh, well, uh, Stunts. There's a game called Stunts. Okay, I have no clue what that is. 
right? That's all it was called. It's called Stunts. And it was a race car game, and you had, like, five different cars you could pick from. There was a Hummer, an Indy car, like a Camaro, and something else. And you could build your own tracks with corkscrews and loops and awesome. bank turns and flat turns. It was absolutely amazing. For the time, the, the interface of that game worked great. The driving worked great. Everything was flawless and absolutely beautiful for being a DOS game. Yeah. Now, with that said, the other game that I really liked playing was, and I don't know why this keeps popping into my head because I could never beat, like, the first five levels, <laughs> but the game that reminds me the most of it is uh, N+. Plus. So in- Ooh, Ninja Plus. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good game. Definitely love that game. But before N+, Plus was ever a thing, was a game called Micro Man. And I do not you were, know that. Exactly. You're going to have to look that one up. So basically, and that was another DOS game. I think eventually it uh, moved to where you didn't have to load it in DOS. But you were this little dude in a spacesuit, which it kind of reminds me of uh, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I space do know suit. this. And I've seen you were this. inside. Yeah, you were inside of a computer and you would jump through the computer and you were the job oh. that you had was to go kill the virus that was in the computer. And you had like little rockets and you can shoot little rockets and stuff microman yeah. was one of my all-time favorite games uh sheldon and i played I think, that forever yeah i think how i know it is by watching you guys play it it looks super familiar yeah most definitely the adventures of microman by brian uh gold in 1993 yeah one of my all-time favorite games and i still wow, say I the intro i forgot about that i still say the intro in my head every once in a while i was like microman <laughs> That was some intro. <laughs> Here it is. I just played it for you. There you go. It's on the podcast. Cool. Adventures of Microman, Crazy Computers. This is straight out of the... It was basically an 80s game. It was developed in the 80s, and then it came out in, like, 1993, 1994. And you were just this just little dude, little red and blue dude in a suit, and you just tried not to die. Mm-hmm. And you started the game, and they were like, go! And you shot these little blue balls. It was awesome. It was one of the first games where it had um, changing maps. So, yeah. like, uh, it kind of, I don't even... Looking at the pictures again, it kind of reminds me of, like, Mega Man. Yeah, and then the freaking guy, the freaking guy uh, <laughs> the freaking would guy. tell you, he's like, the bad guy would be like, you will die. And he would try uh-huh. and kill you with rockets, and it was <laughs> terrible. Okay, uh, that, for, the, for the sake of time, would you rather play Stunts or Microman? Stunts. Okay, so n- like- what was your newer game that you're going to name? Okay, so the newest game that I've been addicted to, unfortunately, but honestly, that I've probably put the most hours into is Battlefield 1. I knew that was going to be one of them. <laughs> I put a lot of... And I, haven't, I have not played it a lot recently, but I have a lot of hours into Battlefield 1, so I can't mm-hmm. say that that is not the newest game that I would play the most. Yeah. Okay, so here's uh, the point of why I asked you games that you like. Okay. So so I'll start with stunts because that was the first one you talked about. What right. is the your least favorite part, the part you hate most about that game, about stunts? Uh, it wasn't multiplayer. That's a good answer. I mean, I wouldn't expect it to be with how long ago that was either. No, but it wasn't multiplayer. What's your most hated part about Battlefield 1? It's multiplayer. (laughs) (laughs) Highlight uh, of the podcast clip right there. (laughs) I would say what I hate about Battlefield 1 the most Uh is the behemoths. The behemoths are supposed to help you come from behind and possibly have a fighting edge. But what ends up happening is is that everybody jumps in the behemoth, and the behemoths are trash, mm-hmm. with maybe the exception of the train. And you end up losing faster than if the behemoth never even showed up. And people were able to come together and get on the points. So, so when you're wait. playing Conquest, I play Conquest. Uh-huh. And when you're playing Conquest... Everybody jumps in behemoth, so now you just lost, like, let's just say five to ten guys uh-huh. that jump in a behemoth, and now nobody is trying to capture the points, and the behemoths are trash. Do away with so, behemoths. I was about or to give say, us something better. I was about to say, would, would you think it's better if they just remove that and you answer my question? Yep. Yeah, just that that random topic I had thought of is like, what's your least favorite part of your favorite game? So that was that. 
it's it's interesting because when I think about it for me, uh, they're always regarding the people that play the game. Because like sure. if I think of Rocket League, my least favorite part is when I put on a team that has an absolute garbage player playing and he scores in our own goal like 400 times. But that's not like the game itself. That's just the player. So it's hard to like actually that. think of a terrible part of a game you like. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of things. I play Rocket League a lot too. Granted, it's on PC and not on Xbox. But we've played on Xbox yep. cross-platform to PC before. Yep, which is awesome. And you can do that. I love that. The game works great. There's nothing that there's nothing really bad about Rocket League that I could say that mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I wish they would change this. The it only thing really- I can think of that I kind of wish. I wish there was more. I know they have the rocket uh, labs maps, yep. but I wish there was more uh, like crazy maps because yeah, I think they there's to, a ton and, and of the it. same thing that just looks different. And they have yep. the couple of rocket labs ones and they have like the yep. snow day, which is like hockey and they have the hoops with, with the basketball. But I wish there was more soccer maps that are just different on the field. Yeah, give us some levels or something like yeah. that. Like, I want San Francisco Rush 2049 maps for Rocket League. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want, like, a ginormous, huge one. And, like, a yeah, super sure. tiny one, too. Because right. it just sounds yeah, really change cool. It, change, change it up a little bit, for sure. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would say that I, as far as the game itself, since we're on Rocket League, the game itself okay. of Rocket League that I would change is the fact that it's cross-platform, yes, but I cannot invite players from Xbox or PlayStation to be in my party and play. That's really <laughs> frustrating. I'm cross-platform, but it's random. And then if I do want to play with my friends, I have to create a yeah. game that is not online with yep. the rest of the world. And it is only in like private, our own private little match. private match. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. a bunch of crap. That would Why be a good I people? I didn't even think about that. That's a good one. They need to fix that. That drives yeah. me nuts. That's not even, like, my favorite game. I don't know why I thought about that one. I don't think I really have a favorite game. That's it's a good game to, to bring of. up. Uh, <laughs> I play... I mean, like, I play Rock Band, and I play, like, Madden and Rock Band. You, you play too much Rock Band. Oh, I play too so many, much. Too many Rock Band videos. Oh, I've Rock been band. I've been putting so many up, but people like them so much, Lloyd. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do either, because I watch them, and I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah, and I play the crap out of Rock Band. I, well, no, I, no, Guitar Hero. I played Guitar Hero. I just don't get it, because, you know, like, I watch them too, and I'm like, why do people like this? And they, <laughs> <laughs> and they do. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, yeah. so Jesse was all happy that you were playing that uh, Russian game. What's the Russian game? The oh, Metro. Game. Metro, yeah, 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 Metro. Jesse. He's, he's loves it. Yeah. Yep, yep. I'll bleep, was I'll bleep that. that name out. I just realized what I just did. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, that game is awesome. Have you played it at all? I have not, and I kind of want to do a playthrough of it just because you have done so many playthroughs. I'm so, I'm so slow at it. I've been doing that playthrough like since the beginning of time. Have you even finished the game? Because I feel like you've beaten it like 17 times by now. You haven't even beaten that... it once, have you? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have not beaten it at all yet. I'm so That's slow. Terrible. Do you watch them? Do you see how many yeah. times I die? Do you... Like every time. Do you, you see die. how slow I am? I walk yeah. so yeah. slow. When I'm, I'm playing, try. I'm like, I think I'm doing great. I think this is a great video. And then I'm like <laughs> editing it, and I'm like, why am I taking 30 minutes to go around this corner? I don't know. <laughs> nope. So we're gonna do a speed speed run challenge. Metro speed run challenge. Whoever can get the fastest time wins. Okay, you can start in like four months and you'll still finish before me, but it's okay. I agree to this. <laughs> okay, we'll do. We'll do. That's our challenge. All right, we can end on that. Okay, cool. Metro speed run challenge. What happened and... to your old games? What old games? Your uh, Dreamcast games. Your... I still have them. We're no, I mean, like, you're, you're going to play videos of those. I will. Cool. We're going to do those. We're going to do those too. Cool. I will post them. They will be on, uh, I'll put them on tower users. Yep. Yeah, that's the gaming one. Yeah, so we'll do. Thank you for hey. coming on. It was a ton of fun to have you, obviously, by the length of the podcast this time. Yeah, I mean, obviously, <laughs> we covered a lot of ground. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, drop a like, subscribe, yeah. leave comments. Subscribe Let us know what to you both want us of to us talk if, about. if you aren't. I mean, I don't know how you got here if you aren't subscribed to either of us, but, I mean, welcome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, let us know what you want to hear about or talk about next, and uh, hopefully we do more of these podcasts in the future. Yep. All right. I'm signing off. Later, Bye. Guys. Have a swell day. Bye.